we were chatting about frame rates and uh, lighting and equipment uh, in the first session, but now we're going to talk about a little bit about actual, I'll do a little bit of a practical. Um, but the other thing about videography is like telling the story, getting all the elements, put them together nicely to give you a nice, beautiful story. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to quickly play a clip uh, of a wedding. Uh, we went up to... Um, Joburg, there's way like Limpopo, uh, they have a big uh, game farm there. The clients took us all, um, me and my crew up, and we, we shot this wedding. And But just the storytelling was so beautiful. And thank you so much, CJ. He's my editor. Um, he put this clip together. So we're just going to show you about how important storytelling is when you're, telling, um, like when you're showcasing a nice video for your client. So, um, Here JP, we go. Here we go. take it away. Which man among you, if he had a hundred sheep and loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go off to the one which was lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he gets home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors saying, rejoice with me because I have found which was lost. Which woman, if she has ten silver coins and loses one coin, does not light up a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and her neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which was lost. to have found it, you're going to have to treasure it, and you're going to have to cherish it, and you're going to have to forgive it, and you're going to have to love it, and you're going to have to bear with it, but it is the key to joy, and the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. can look after it and if they can forgive it and if they can cherish it that will bring the joy that will give you the strength for the journey it got you here and it can keep you here you found it
Yeah. Yo, guys, uh, <clears throat> that that video gives me uh, it, it gives me goosebumps every time I watch it, and I can watch. I've been watching it so many times. Um, basically, you guys can hear the voiceover at the back. Made laid the foundation of that video, and it wasn't pre-recorded. It was just part of the normal ceremony. What J C J, uh, the editor, did so brilliantly is just the right pauses at the right time by just stretching it out a bit, leaving a bit of a suspense. So when you <coughs> edit a wedding video, you start out with the cinematic style, the, the getting ready, the speech, and wh when they kiss, they do the first kiss, then you, you, you uplift, go over to the second song, which is your upliftment, the joy. The, so the, in, the, in the first part, you tell the story, you bring the tears, and then you wipe them, and then the, we started partying with the beautiful uplifting. So, a video is all about storytelling as well at the end of the day. Um, and to get that right perfectly, you, you need to start looking at other videographers' work to get a sense of a flow. Especially the guys overseas, uh, they really do amazing work. So, uh, even yeah. locally? Yeah, even there's some uh, amazing, but we started out watching people's work uh, overseas. Uh, overseas and then we started following local um, videographers. There's a bunch of amazing uh, cinematographers in uh, locally. Um, by just watching their videos, you get a sense of an idea how you should edit your video. Uh, it's basically, <coughs> an, again, good audio. Oh man, that it makes a video so, so, so beautiful. Um, so yeah, just one, on, on that spot, I just wanted to talk about that quick. Yeah, and uh, also that's <coughs> a perfect um, example of the use of um, varying frame rates. So yeah. um, using, selecting in the editing process where we are going to slow down and where we're going to keep it at normal speed. Mm. Um, and that also helps to tell the story. So freezing that emotion that when someone's yeah. crying, like holding that, you know, mm. let the tear just stand there for a moment. Although we, you know, mm. just, just so that you can actually pay attention to yeah. that. And it's kind of accent. I, mm. I like to refer it as um, using a visual accents. Um, because when I even edit to music, I, I listen to the music and I want I want, I want what I hear is what I want to see. So I want to kind of match what my eyes see and what my ears, mm -hmm. it must be like a one, one experience. Um, and I take that approach most mm -hmm. cases as often as I can. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. your end client doesn't want that. They would say, no, 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 just give us the talk, that's all. Don't, don't do, mm -hmm. and then you're burning to, because you know you can tell some, say something amazing through this, but yeah. you know, at the end of the day, we we need to satisfy the one who Client, pays the yeah. bills. So yeah. Good. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna quickly do a setup for you guys. Well, we've done the setup, but we explain <coughs> we explain the setup. Um, Whatever he said. <coughs> <laughs> so we got we gotta quickly explain, uh, explain what we've set up during yeah. the break, um, and just uh, t taking you step by step through the whole process of just normal. We're just gonna do a one camera shot. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's most likely gonna put one of his camera. Um, cameras on just for a second angle. We're gonna do two angles and then we're gonna sync it. I was just to give you guys an idea of how to sync two camera angles together. Um, and then we're just gonna put a little bit of a clip together while um, I'll be uh, taking some questions and answer. He's just gonna quickly, um, we're gonna set it up there and we're gonna show you. Uh, I think uh, you have Premiere Pro with you, yeah? No, I don't. Okay, so I'll put my Premiere Pro on okay. then rather. Okay. Uh, just because not everybody's got, who works from PC? And um, who works from a Mac? Who use Final Cut? Final Cut. So who is, is using Premiere Pro? Okay, so that's... Okay, so okay. I'll copy it here. I'll copy it there. Yeah. While you're editing that, I'll also edit it. Okay, At the end of the fine. day, it does the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's got a... A file. It's like Nikon, it's got Canon, a whatever you... Yeah, it's got a file browser where all your files <coughs> go. It's got a timeline. And mm. you do pretty much the same thing. Yeah. So I think we're going to keep it as simple as possible mm. uh, in terms of where the file yeah. comes in the timeline, yeah. where to cut it. and. Because there's not the right and the wrong because he, he, he started out with, with a program. When you invest all your time in one program, it's difficult to switch over to another mm. one and pretty much do the same thing. Yeah. It's the same with Canon and Nikon. If yeah. you invest it in all your lenses in Canon, yeah. why would you switch over to yeah. Fuji or... Um, so we're just going to quickly um, do a quick shoot. Um, so we're going to talk as we go. Um, so I, I, I'll be the subject and he's going to explain. We're just going to do a one or two or three camera light setup. So okay, my subject. Okay, uh, I will be subject to your... Yes. 
it's one um, of the very few times I can I can <laughs> I can get that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the um, the live feed. Okay. So so basically what what we what we're going to do um, is m in most cases you're gonna be confronted with a situation where you just need to shoot something, but cleanly, neatly do it the right way, following the right principles and guidelines. There we go. Yeah. Um, with one camera, and oftentimes that's all you need. Um, but what I want to do is just show you basically in, in, a, in a moment in our life um, is we need to do something like this, mm. but then we need to light up what the shot's mm. going to look like. So we see that there's a lot of stuff there, and oftentimes you are faced with, you come to a room or a place, and you see there's so much clutter, but you must remember that your frame, your camera frame, is not going to always see that, because it also depends on what lens you use. Um, in this case, I'm using an 85mm um, 1.8. I know that all that I'm going to see is literally his head and shoulders. So I just need to worry, with, worry about what's behind his head and his shoulders. I know that there's a soft boxes there and there's a table, there's stand standing, there's a couch. Mm -hmm. If I had, was, were using a, a wide angle lens, I'd see all of that. But I don't want to see all that. So um, <laughs> okay, he interrupted okay. me, then he says to me, okay. Um, anyway, so, so what I did here was um, a single shot. I'm going to just do a basic close up. Well, basic, it's a close up. Um, it's not an extreme close-up, so also when you, when you do kind of research shot frames and stuff online, you learn about um, a wide shot, um, a medium wide, uh, or full wide, medium wide, which is basically like full body length, medium body length, um, and then you get a close, uh, medium close-up, close-up, extreme close-up. Okay, gonna bring it. Uh -huh. so, so basically, um, I, I've, I've connected the setup with, with um, the camera's got a, a, a mic on board. All I'm going to do with this audio that's coming into the camera is I'm just going to use it as a reference. So I'm going to record his voice using a, we call it a lav mic, lavalier, lavalier or lapel mic, um, which is literally going to capture just his voice. And we'll put, I normally, we normally put it on the sternum. So that's about the range because you want it to sound as natural as possible. It's not in exactly the, the most natural because the most natural is capturing the sound kind of above the head in front of them. But this is the, most, this is the easiest way under the circumstances um, and also the most practical. Um, so right about here, and if you keep it too low, it's, you're going to have to push up the, the, the level, the gain level, which means you're going to capture more ambience. We want to de decrease the ambience we pick up, but also not too close because then we get too much um, it's going to sound too, maybe bassy, too, too much bass, or you're going to get too much, all that stuff. And sometimes we don't want to hear too much detail, or of those kind of details. So what I'm doing is, this is a, a setup that you can get at most camera stores. And what this is, is a, it's a Rode, um, Rode Smart Lav. Um, this product is, is awesome. Rode, the company Rode makes um, uh, international standard audio capture uh, products. And this is basically a product that's designed for people like us um, to capture audio. Very good quality little mic. Um, costs about a thousand rand, thousand two hundred or something like that. Um, and this is a smart lab because it comes with a smartphone audio jack basically with the three pins. So you can actually put this into your smartphone, download the Rode app, and you can actually record um, lapel audio into your smartphone via that app. Um, I think it's a, an iPhone app. I'm not sure. I've, I've searched for the Android. There might be an Android version. Um, but I've also used this in, this, in the phone's in the phone standard um, voice recorder, and it works perfectly. But now it comes with this little adapter, which converts it to a stereo two pin, which allows me to put it into either la a, a, a wireless system like this, because I've got the same mic here, and go into a recording input. What I'm using here is a little field recorder. Um, this field recorder has got an onboard stereo mic, and this records um, good quality audio and, and converts it to either wave, which is a high <coughs> quality, uh, either wave or MP3 audio, just picture, JPEG file, raw picture file. It's that kind of thing. With the wave, you get more detail in the audio, or more information. With MP3, it's a smaller compressed file. Um, 
we, we, we work with Wave and um, we set it to the same setting that our cameras will pick up. And just for the record, our cameras record um, audio, you might not understand it now, but the audio quality is 24 bits at 48 kilohertz. It's a sample rate, uh, a bit rate. So um, that is what all DSLRs, or most DSLRs record. So this device allows you to match that. You can set it, it gives you different options. And I normally set it to exact, the exact um, setting so that when I do sync it with my DSLR, I'm able to easily sync it because if, 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 it, if it's a different rate, the file size and length and bit rate is, is different. So I struggle to <coughs> synchronize it. So that's what, what I do with this. And something like this is somewhere in the region of 1,800 to 2,200 um, in most stores. There's a new model out, but it does exactly the same thing. If I want to capture ambient sound wherever, um, I would not use the input and I'll just use set this up to record the, the, with, the, with the stereo mic um, because the good quality mic, say if I just want to record ambience, like you want to you wanna record, record some picture but you want to pick up some beach sounds or forest sounds or, or traffic or whatever, outdoor ambience, that's the perfect thing to, to use. You can control the, how much level comes in and then you can also monitor it with headphones. Which, so it gives you all the little features that a professional device gives you, but in a smaller compact thing. What I'm using for it now is um, putting the mic in here. I'll start recording on here and I'll just put it in his pocket. And that's an easy way to have a, more, a very compact setup. Camera, take it out of your bag. You take a mic out, you take this out and that's all. Camera, one lens, a, a mic on board and a thing like this literally fits into a little bag. So there you go, you, you, you literally pitch up with a, to your job to do this little thing with a sling bag camera and that's all. Not coming with 10 bags or anything like that. So um, that's why I have a, a setup like this because if I need to travel tomorrow, get on a plane, I need to pack everything into a bag and sometimes having a big audio recorder, having a huge mic, all those things, it's, it's really, it, it really weighs on, on the luggage that you can take on a plane. So are, are we sorted? Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Focus. Uh, so let's quickly... Uh, uh, guys, I'm gonna... Um, especially um, when you have a f only a phone, you have somebody who just wanna quickly record something. This little light over here, you'll see there, if I put it on, it's not much, but just behind my hair, it's, a, it's a, out of the shot, just over here. It just gives you that little bit of a rim, especially when you're in the dark. Yeah. Just have somebody to take your phone, put a little bit of light on, just hold it just out of frame. You can see the phone over here is just out of frame. Yeah. And it can still give you a nice rim on your head. So, so we're going to do some different lighting setups Yeah, now. so as you can see in the frame, if I've, all I've got is one light. I'm <coughs> going to light whatever's the most important, and that's going to be his face. Your face is very important to me right now. <laughs> okay, so, so, now so, so with, a, with, a, with, a, with um, the same as we, what we do when we are doing portrait photography, you work with the same lighting concepts. You've got a key light, you've got your full light, and you've got your back light. Um, what I'm doing here, <coughs> I, I like to work with a two light setup. Sometimes I do a three light setup. This is a three light setup, and I explain now. Mm. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing, this is the key light. So I've got one, that's the one string, that's two. Okay, I'm going to use it uh, two. two okay, so I'm lighting his face and the exposure for what I'm looking for is, is, is good. I'm not overexposing and I'm not underexposing. Mm. But now you can see that My he, shoulders he, he, are yeah, the shoulder line is blending into the background. So for that then I'll use a back line also, backlight also out of frame. But I'll make sure that the light's gonna spill on the on his back. Where's the switch? To the bottom. Bottom, bottom, bottom. No, ah. the bottom. Okay. So you'll see. There we go. Boom. So now it black gives me black. A, yes, it gives me a bit of separation from the background. But now to make it a little bit more interesting, I will actually light the wall. Um, can you see that? Can we see that? See on this side. That side. Yeah. Okay. So what I just did there was I just lit Look the wall. Look at my shoulder on this side. Yeah. You'll see there the black stands out on the black backdrop. Gives you nice definition. So when you do uh, black on black uh, uh, backdrops, uh, black shirt or uh, black hair 
always helps to give you a little bit of a rim. Um, you see that on the back end of my head, it helps a lot just to create a, de a definition. Yeah. So, so just to quickly explain my settings, um, I'm, I've got the camera set at 50th of a second. That's the shutter speed. It's shooting at 25 frames per second. 25 frames, 50th of a second, 1 50th of a second at f4. <coughs> I could have gone to f1.8, but I'd, I want to get some contrast. I want to get good dark and good whites. <laughs> I mean, you're good. You're Come good, man. You're good. Say you're good. It. So, so I want to get good depth in, my, in, in terms of my color. But now the reason why I don't put him against the wall is because I want to get some separation. I want to create some depth. So there is about, that, what's that, two and a half meters from the back wall? Yeah, it's about two and a yeah, half. Yeah, about two and a half meters. So which allows me, even at F4, to throw the background out of focus. So I've got mm -hmm. some nice out of focus background. Mm -hmm. But you don't know about that background until I light it up. Because then it creates some nice separation. Um, mm -hmm. If I was shooting an interview, also with a lav, and I was at an, at an event, many people think, okay, we must shoot into the wall. No, I'd stand with my back to the wall, have everything happening in the back, and because we want to create some context of what we are shooting, yeah. we'd frame our subject with the busyness happening. So sometimes I'd, we'd frame him to the side using our rule of thirds, and there you'd see some, some action happening, but all out of focus. And sometimes we want to be, be a bit adventurous, and we'll go even to 1.4. <coughs> then it's even more blurred. Yeah. You know, so we, we have fun. We have fun with this. Okay, the, the most important thing is about the frame and yeah. your subject. Yeah. So when you look at me now, I'm pretty much in the center of the frame when I move a bit up like, to the side. You always need to follow your light source. So if I'm looking at my right hand side, my light source is on this side. So sitting on this side, looking to my light source, what's happening? I'm actually going out of frame. Yeah. Uh, or you, so you, you always wanted to speak, you want to speak into the frame. So I will always go on this side, so I'm into the frame. Leading space. Going to my, sub, uh, my, uh, my key, key light. light. So it's always, I see these interviews where people are sitting like this. Uh, nice lighting setup, but the guy is speaking like to the other side of the actual frame, which we actually, because you can give yourself a place to either drop a lower third of a text or say uh, a head of uh, department or whatever. Yeah. So always make sure you leave enough space and let the guy speak into the frame. I have seen scenarios where the videographer uses, breaks the rule. But just turn, turn to the, that way, turn yourself, and they shoot like that. Um, and yes, we will say, why is he breaking the rule? It's, it's context. So in this context, we are shooting something for a client and we're going to do, so, do things, we're going to follow the rules so that the client is happy and the client's got something that looks standard. So face, face there. Cool. Now, this is how we go. We always go, go according to what's safe, but then we can, we can shoot a, a, an additional angle um, because now I can use some creative editing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the screen to you so that you can quickly see. I'm quickly going to frame him and break this composition rule and frame him to the other side, looking into the corner. So I could use this angle or this shot as a cutaway. If I, I forgot it right, as a cutaway. Let me just take a still picture here. I'll take a still. Let's see. So I'll use this as a cutaway angle or shot in the edit, just as a quick one. And I can even black and white that <coughs> while this is in standard color. So I do that black and white. And maybe just to add more context to what he's talking about, if we look, listen to the content matter, mm. he's maybe talking about, like in this case, hi, I'm Nilis from Lightline Studio. We find some shots around the studio and overlay that. Yeah. And that way we are telling a story, yeah. a visual story. So even if there's no sound, let's say we're watching this on a plane and there's only subtitles, but you can't hear anything, but the visuals are immediately giving you an idea of what this yeah. person is speaking about. And um, that's, that's kind of where we want to go to with, with video production. You start with understanding videography, but then you want to tell a bit more of a story. So like when you do with a wedding, you don't just take one or two photos of the couple. You take photos of the couple getting dressed. You take photos of the couple interacting. 
You, t you just tell a story of what's happening, and just with that, people can watch these those photos, and they'll know exactly what has happened and the mood of the day. So, <clears throat> with this setup here, um, we are happy with the picture we've got, but now that's only half the job. We've got to get good audio. Yeah. So I'm literally going to mic him up now. Okay. So on the the micing up of somebody, uh, if you have a lady Check that one, you need two. to mic up, it's always a bit difficult especially when you're a guy testing one two you need to put the cable up so you either have two questions either get another lady one, to help you one two it's always good uh, practice because otherwise you don't want to lift the lady's thing up, uh, shirt up and try to put your hand and underneath so you also listen some of them are so used to getting mic'd up they're just, oh, don't yeah. worry just go on like we've done it so many times especially your celebrities or your uh, tv hosts they don't care because they are used to it but if you need to interview somebody that's not used to uh you don't want to just like grab a shirt, <laughs> put the mic up. So just ask her, listen, um, do you mind if you just go to the bathroom, just take this and you show you exactly how to do it. You go to the bathroom, lift the shirt up, and just let it hang in front here. Then the rest you can just fix. Uh, even like I don't even put my hand or put the, um, I ask a lady, if I see somebody, listen, can you please help me with this? It's just good etiquette, especially in the corporate uh, market. You don't want to fiddle with somebody like the guys are fine you just put his belt back you put the pack in with the ladies i always ask somebody in the office listen can you please just help me here um so yeah so basically with making up like i said exactly don't like touch me <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay okay can i may, may i make yes you, up? you can enter okay. my space okay um so what i'm doing now is i'm just literally going to put it on the sternum, just here where the sternum is, um, and generally when he's wearing a dress shirt, the second button. Second button is a good spot. So put that in, and then we need to pop this into all the, the shirt down. all the way down. Okay, you so might. it's easier to go down than up. So yeah. um, he's mic'd up with two mics, so, so we can hear you twice. It, it's just filling down, yeah, yeah. so it's okay. fine. <clears throat> that makes it tricky. Yeah, it's very tricky. Yeah, we, we normally we normally sometimes we we if we don't forget we try to anticipate that the person might not wear anything. Yeah. Sometimes it's a good thing to if you if you have know there's going to be ladies take a jacket or an extra thing with that we, helps as we well. We normally ask the, the the guys to please wear something that is mic appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Please don't come because sometimes the ladies don't want to uh, take a top off because that's how they are and they have the thin. So there's no place where you can. Uh, put the mic on this so we or normally ask them, listen, we're coming tomorrow to your office, we're going to do a corporate uh, interview with you, please wear something where you can put the mic where you're, <coughs> where you're comfortable with. Some, sometimes it's an, it's an event and you know that... On the go you need Yeah, to. on the go you've got to think on your feet. So what I've done is so, someone's wearing like a sweater and I use the, the, the collar and I'll literally just clip it on the collar on the side and if we know that she's speaking, she's turning herself away from the camera, the, the part that's away from the camera, we hide the mic there. And we try to set it with yeah. headphones so that we can hear her optimally. Yeah. Um, and so that's one of those, those things you can do. Um, sometimes they have a jacket, they'll just get the jacket, put it on, and put it, literally put it on the, what's it, the hem of the jacket? Yeah. Or something? Um, yeah. Uh, what I normally look first up is the, the, the way the podium goes to the audience. Say so for instance, you've got an event, but the, the, the big screen is on this side, but the podium is on that side. So what we normally do is we try to hide the battery pack then on this side, because when I'm facing the audience, sometimes I walk around and I, then I can see the battery pack uh, very um, from the guys that's sitting in front, but from this side. You don't um, see anything. Small, it's just small tips. Yeah, so um, I'm keeping my, my input level fairly low. So if I put this in, um, then literally speak. Mic check. Mic check. Mic. As he speaks, what's the loudest you'll, you'll speak? Um, yeah, man. Okay. So only Sorry, when, only when he does that at peaks. But when he speaks normally, then the high the, the highest level goes. Is <laughs> 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 okay. So they, uh, they yeah, they wait, asked wait, me wait, to test the mic, but I didn't want to. Yeah. One, two, one, two. Okay. <laughs> okay. So so I, do, I I try not to let let it when he's speaking normal normally um, at a normal level to go past the middle the the, the middle. I mean, there's decibel meters and stuff. Mm. Just visually trust your eyes. Don't yeah. let it go past middle. Then you know at least you've got good audio. You can push it up later or down if you need to. Yeah. Do you have a question? Oh, oh okay. All good. Yeah. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to record onto there. 
Lock it. Mic check, mic check, mic check. Put it in your pocket. Okay, I'm just gonna put the sweet out down here. So normally we've got uh, battery packs, you'll see at the back of my, um, they normally clip into your belt. It's just easy to, to spare away. These we normally use at the, uh, at the sound desk because you don't have a clip or, um, so we put it at the sound desk, uh, uh, these little ones, but the other ones we just mic you up. Um, but just for now, we're just gonna use this one. Um, so my, uh, my volume levels looks good, no peaking. So, um, right, so the first thing is, uh, uh, some, some clients want a, def a specific look where they talk to an audience in, in camera, but when you do most of your corporate stuff, they want to, you, you literally uh, are like 15 or 20 degrees off camera. So it's as if you're talking to somebody, but not straight to the camera. So this looks stupid because you, if you want to uh, um, speak to camera, if you want to bring a point over, you speak you directly into like, guys, come on to my party, it's going to be amazing. But if you're telling about, about, your, about your story, you'll see that most of the guys, they just go off camera, like yeah. literally So, so, so I would degrees. maybe stand here and he'd look into my eyes and I'd make sure that it's... Yeah. So the um, 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 then you just look at that and say, listen, guys, uh, welcome to Lightline Studio. It was an amazing week. And you guys can see uh, I'm not directly facing the camera because it, it can be a little bit distracting if you have to, because people look down, they look up. Uh, there's people that's very uncomfortable looking into that camera. You won't believe it. It's like they just can't look at the camera. They, they will speak like this or they will just go th like that the whole time. So then you just to make them feel comfortable, say, just look at my hand. And then you stand there for the whole interview. <laughs> and they will look at your hand and speak to your hand. They're not intimidated at no. all. Or you just lock it there and give them like, you see that pole over there, just aim at that and start speaking. Yeah. So, so generally the principle is in terms of framing for or doing an interview, if people, if you're interviewing someone, um, you're asking them about themselves or about something, a subject matter. Mm -hmm. Then you try to make it conversational. He's going to look off camera mm -hmm. and it's going to look as if he's speaking to someone. So the viewer, is pretty much the third person. Yeah. The viewer is the one that's now getting all the information that's needed. But if you've got a message directly to the viewer, to the audience, mm. look into camera. I'm just gonna, uh, yeah. Okay, the and then I'll try and frame it more centered. So in, in, that, in that instance, I would use a slightly more centered frame. He's not perfectly centered. There's still more space there, but it still has a, a, a nice look. I like the creative shot. I like the, the framing. If I wanna, follow the rules to the T, I do it that way. But I like this. Hi guys, thank you so much for live streaming. It was amazing. Uh, see you guys next week. <laughs> not. <laughs> okay. They're not gonna be okay. here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so what I do, what we'd have to do is we'll just direct him, to, brief him on what he needs to say. Okay. So you're going to introduce yourself. Okay. Okay, so just so you know, this is not real, so that you see it's yeah, real. It's so if I fight with him, it's, it's for real. I'm going to get my notes quick. Yeah, just so. <laughs> so you're going to introduce yourself, yeah. introduce the studio, yeah. um, and, ex and just give a quick introduction of what Light Lunch Productions do okay. at the studio and what we offer to other professionals okay. and clients. So just before you, uh, you go on to that note is, sometimes there's not going to be a, a guy on the other end that's going to ask the question. So you have to brief your clients to include the question in your answer. Because if he says, um, what day is it today? I say, Thursday. So it's going to be weird to have a video shot of him saying Thursday. <laughs> he said, what day of the week is it? The, week, the day of the week is today is Thursday. So then you actually include your answer, the question in your answer. So how long have you have Lightline Studio? So Lightline Studio, I've started in 1990, whatever. Do you understand? It's very, f for, to just to cut out the other, the other guy behind the camera to get the flow of the interview. You have to ask them, listen, just include the question in your answer so that the audience know exactly what you are actually talking about. Because <coughs> it's stupid to just give you straight on answer, but you don't know what, what the context is all about. Okay, so just, just also... So I'm going to stop this quickly. Okay, um, it's, it's on hold. No, it's fine. You can keep recording. It's fine. Is it fine? Okay, yeah. cool. So um, also, um, just so that you can see visually when he moves his hands, m use your hands, man. Yeah, yeah. Good, cool. You see, there's, there's some blur in the motion. There's motion blur where that's what 25 frames oh, looks thanks. like. And without realizing it, we are actually used to it. Subconsciously, we, yeah. we watch this on TV all the time. Um, so your eyes don't get but up, if no. I were to set this at a higher frame rate, I can't do it now because the, the TV is set for this, then you'd literally see, like in real 
in real time how, the, how <coughs> his hand is moving. You, you won't see any blur. Um, and that's the difference. But what I'm able to do is I can slow that down and look smooth, like you saw on that wedding video. Are you okay? So, yeah. Okay, cool. Sorry, it's been a little we week. We're going to do a two camera. Uh, you want to do that? Doing two camera. Do I'll do two cameras. Up. So, we're going to do two camera angles on this. Um, just to show you guys how we sync it in post. Um, I think the, volume, uh, the audio levels are already checked with that one just now. Uh, maybe you can get like an interesting angle from this side, like. Yeah. Um, or, I'll do or, that now. Or this end. Okay. So, um, <coughs> so it'll be problem. Um, it takes a lot of practice, especially when you have to speak to an audience or um, or, or much camera. Used to it by now. Okay, here okay. we go. So here we so go. I'm, I'm I'm rolling, but now you're gonna speak into camera. Okay. I want you to speak into camera. You want me one. to speak into camera? Yes. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Niels Engelbrecht from Lightline Studio. We had an amazing week here. We are presenting a few workshops for a few of, of our uh, audiences online and inside the studio. Uh, so what we did this week is we uh, had a few speakers that came out and uh, just delivered a few speeches. So uh, thank you guys so much for uh, coming through. Uh, we had an amazing time with you all. Check out our Instagram at Lightland Studio SA um, and see you guys next week. Okay, can we do that one more time? Okay, let's do that yeah. one more time. <coughs> So I'm still in camera. <coughs> still in camera. I'm still rolling. Okay, so we've got two camera angles and go. Hi guys, I'm Niels Engelbrecht from Lightline Studio, Lightline's production. Today, you know, yeah, it's way too fast, so you have to pace yourself. <coughs> okay. Hi guys, I'm Niels Engelbrecht from Lightline Studio. This is very awkward because there's a lot of people just watching me on the other side of this lens. Uh, so I don't know what to say. It's a beautiful day. It started raining, but it keeps busy clearing up. So with you from me, Lightline Studio, Niels Engelbrecht. See you next week. Okay, got it. <laughs> oh my word, this is awkward. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what JP is going to do now is going to quickly, uh, I'm just going to quickly set up Premiere Pro for you guys. Um, I'm going to put off all the lights. <coughs> and then the other thing, especially shooting events and stuff. You will quickly get to know um, charging. St uh, you can see my laptop there off track. And I'm okay. uh, that you need to have a charging station ready. Because once you start filming, you'll see the batteries are just going and going and going. And then you run out of batteries. So every time we go to a shoot, we always have a, uh, always have a charging station already set up. So that when the first battery goes, we quickly put it on charge. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to quickly put this one off. Um, and you can just put this one into the laptop. Okay. Um, is there any questions? If you have any questions, please uh, grab the mic quickly that we can share with you. Um, if you have a question, put your hand up. We're going to quickly do a few um, questions. Yeah, I'm going to do it. 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 Thanks, Henry. Okay, so I'm just gonna t and remember, guys. I think one of the um, main things is sometimes we we forget to take the mic from the guy that actually speak. We do the shoot, and then the guy uh, uh, he, like, "Where's my mic?" And he left with the speaker. He got into his car and he drove to the airport. Uh, so please, guys, when you please stop record, please remember to to take the the mics. Okay, JB. Okay. Okay, you didn't stop. Okay, hello. Welcome back, uh, all the guys from live streaming as well. Um, <clears throat> so basically, you can see here I've, uh, I've dumped my two cards. I've got camera one, this file over on this side. Camera two, the more interesting, I put a few different clips. And my main audio, which is over here. So we've, I've got uh, my three cards here, so I'm going to open up Premiere Pro. Uh, before I go there, I just want to quickly show you where you can actually buy this product. So. If you go into adobe.com, you'll see on, on this section there is Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm just going to close this one. Um, I've got two versions of it. Um, so go into this tab, Premiere Pro, you'll see the $20. That is about 300 and just over 300 rand a month. Um, I would strongly advise you guys to get this on a monthly basis because if you need to buy it, it's very, very expensive. 
Um, I've got the full pack, uh, all the, um, I think it's about, um, I'll just check what is the pricing. So, so we do have the design studio, we've got Premiere Pro, Lightroom, Photoshop, we've got all of them because we uh, have a few um, different parts in our business. So you can just go online, get the um, Premiere Pro. Every time you log in, you see here, he asked me to say, listen, I've, I'm logged in in my PC at home or at the office. And I just say, please sign me out of that one so I can sign in here. So uh, Adobe will then automatically, the only bad thing about Adobe, uh, uh, this process, if you don't have in internet access, you can't edit. Um, you have to be logged in. Uh, if you uh, restart your uh, computer, you want to log in again. Unfortunately, you won't be able to because you need to put in your new username and password. And if you can't uh, um, verify your account details, then you can't go into the program. So be in mind if you want to go to the Dragon's Bag or somewhere where there's no internet access, like on the farm. Um, I normally log in for uh, for the first time. I don't close my uh, or the, I don't put off my computer, so I, I keep my program open. So uh, while your program is open, you can still keep editing. Um, but once you close the program, you need to uh, go into the program again. So here's a lot of stuff. Um, let's let's go with a new project. So I'm gonna do this testing. There's a different, guys, I'm not going to go too deep into this. There's so many tutorials online. Please, I'm not, I don't want to waste your time. There's so many tutorials. It's just how to edit a video. They will explain it to you. So I'm just going to show you quickly uh, what we're going to do now. My, uh, my stuff is already set up. All, um, so I'm just going to say testing. And OK, so what I'm going to do is going to open up my timeline. It's uh, basically um, uh, photog uh, videography 101. I'm just going to grab my footage. It's going to take a while to import. So here I've got my timeline, uh, my um, my bin where all my media is. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to drag this um, folder, and I'm just going to grab those three angles, and I'm just going to drop it right here in my bin. So I'm just going to quickly drop it there. You'll see at the top it will start importing the video. Um, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly drag it onto this timeline over here. You'll see it will um, throw all the clips on the one side. So this is my main audio. The green one is all your, also always your main audio. Um, I'm just going to see how many clips I have here. So if I, this is the one that you took. So I'm just going to quickly see camera two. The, they are... Oh, this is still, I think this is still image you took, that one. Okay. So one of them are uh, MP4, MP4, MP4. So yeah, take these two. The, yeah. the last two. Yes. So I'm just going to quickly. But that will be on top of the. Delete them. I'm going to throw this one over here. Just just make sure that you see the, the blue goes into the green. Let that does not happen. Otherwise, it overwrites this. So you can move it up and down. But just don't let it go in there. Otherwise, you cut the audio out. So just. Uh, put it over on that side and then your other camera angle is camera two uh, sorry is camera one this is your main angle so you're gonna throw it there as well so I know the stuff that I was talking about oh here it is the back you can see so now I need to sync up because we, we talked a lot till we get to that little part where we actually recorded so all I'm gonna do now is just gonna drag this one over down here I think it was somewhere over here, but I'm just going to select the two files, right click on it and say mid uh, synchronize. So then you say listen, uh, select by audio, and you just say okay. You see what happened? It just moved to that specific spot. So when I go, go there now, so I enable the audio from the, um, the actual Hi video. Okay. Cool. Can you take over? No, no, can you? Okay. Okay, yeah. cool. So, so. Um, micro crane. Yeah. Um, do you want to, yeah, because we need to just. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I can't make it so that I just want to sit down. I'm going to up my volume quickly. So when you listen here, you'll see, let's play. All synced up. 
So now what you can do is uh, I normally uh, cut the piece over here and the one on that side. I'm just, I'm just for, the, for this uh, purposes, I'm just going to delete it. I think it's the last one, the one that you took. Delete, undo. <laughs> so I think it's this one over on that side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select um, this clip. You see, the, the above those two stripes is the audio. Uh, anything underneath that is audio. So now I'm just going to make sure, I'm just going to select these two files and say right click. There's other ways to do this. You see, there we go. So the last part we, we got, um, say for instance, okay. Okay, so now um, you see this uh, audio, you, you you just disable it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch between... Okay, wait, Kapal, so you have to face yourself. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch between... You see how easy it is to actually just sync those two uh, so files up. And you can just easily cut in between. Uh, this eyes over here, you see there's a layer over here. Everything that's above the other one, the layer will be first. So it's like a Photoshop layer. So the, the, the one that's in the top, top bar will always be the one that you see. The one that's beneath is the one that's under the second layer. So if you want to disable that layer, you just press this eye here. Then you'll see the top one if you don't want to see the top one. And so you can go down all the way down. So especially when you do multicam, like six camera angles, you want to jump between the angles, you just uh, uh, unselect that eyes. And then also always uh, deselect the, 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 the ambient, that uh, audio that was recorded in camera, and just use the green one. Um, so uh, yeah, that's basically how, how easy it is. So I'm just going to quickly run through a few stuff. Um, I've set it up uh, on a timeline. Mine's already set up. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly um, delete that part. I'm just going to bring it to the front. So <coughs> like in Photoshop and Lightroom, you've got, um, you've got your uh, exposures, your contrast. So if I just put a little bit of contrast on there, uh, down the shadows, you can you can see it's basically the same as Photoshop or Lightroom. So you can still manipulate uh, that, but there is just so many stuff that you can do uh, with video. It's it's uh, uh, we we don't have time for that. There's so many tutorials. If you want to go into deeply into um, creating videos, uh, JP is busy creating a quickly video here while we speak. Um, but basically, that's. That's your bin, you drag your footage on, you just cut and paste. If you want to, while I'm standing here, I can actually um, say, for instance, I'm going to go to my pictures and I'm going to drag those, these three photos on, on here. So I'm just going to quickly drag them into this folder bin. So I'm just going to put this three, so let's just quickly zoom in. So this is what JP was talking about, the voiceover. And this could just as be, uh, uh, might as well just be video clips as well. So just to give you an idea, I'm talking. Uh, audience is online and inside the studio. Uh, so what we did this week is we uh, had a few speakers that came out and uh, just delivered a few speeches. So and then always just select your file because it's large photos. You just go right click and say scale to frame size. Otherwise, it's going to be huge what files. And so you can play video clips and the voiceover is nicely on the bottom. Yeah. <coughs> so any questions regarding this so far? I'll just grab the mic quickly. Sorry about that. Very good. <coughs> I hope it's... Oh, oh is it off? Okay. Oh, it's, it's, fine. it's uh, off. Yeah, sorry. It's fine. Okay, just, just uh, I'll, I'll repeat the question. Okay, so the, the uh, questions you ask is about transitions. There's a lot of transition packs that you can buy. You see them online, I think on Instagram, they're every second post uh, sponsored by Buy My 70 uh, uh, Transitions. Yeah, for sure. It just makes that, um, 
it just makes it look good um, at the end of the day. Just give you something else, that zoom effect. You'll see the whole swirl, the zoom. All, de all depends on, on the style, on yeah. the style of the video. Depending on what are you shooting. I will never use transition in a, a corporate video. Uh, what I will use it on nice be uh, behind the scenes videos or highlight film of uh, event, yes, for sure. Uh, but on, in corporate, um, I would rather just keep it simple. Do your lower thirds. Lower thirds uh, makes your corporate videos look nice. It's just uh, jumping some tests. He's gonna. Um, can you drop us a lower third there? Yeah, I can. Can I quickly just get the feed? Okay. So okay, what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna give the feed over to JP. Okay. <coughs> so he's gonna show me what he did in Final Cut. Now is um, just by adding a, a few uh, transitions, <coughs> uh, text. Um, yes, live. Okay. I am live. Let me just full frame here. There we go. Okay, so so basically what, I just did exactly what he did. Um, it just looks slightly different um, layout, but basically where he finds his files, I find it here. So it's the same thing and that's my timeline. Just a little bit better. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so basically I'm able to um, see, see my timeline. <coughs> Here's the two sections that we recorded. Um, we've got the first section. I then cut everything in between and before, and then I brought um, the, uh, the second section closer, and the extra angle I shot with the other camera, I just l put over that, and how I matched it. I first, um, I f I f we have my three folders here. So that's my audio. That's the camera one. That's the camera two. So all I did was I selected each camera angle and that audio together and I said synchronize. So basically I, did, I selected, then I pressed command and selected the angle I want to sync that with, right click, and then I go synchronize clips. Whoops. Okay. Okay, and then it gave me this, it synchronized exactly what it did on Neil's computer. It synchronized the video um, clip with the audio exactly where it starts. Mm. Just see, where's the mic? Oh, there's no mic. Oh, there's no audio. You put the audio down. Oh, yeah, just put okay. the audio up quickly. Audio yeah, up, just that we can hear you in, in studio. Okay. Okay, so that's what my synchronized clip looks like. Hi guys, I'm Nelson Gorda from Lightline Studio. We had an amazing week here. We are presenting a few workshops for a few of, of our... Uh, so you, you, you hear how clean his, his voice sounds. <coughs> nice and clean, and that's what you're hearing. I did not use the, the, the audio of the camera because I don't want ambient audio. Um, let me just... Uh, while, it's, while on that note, um, guys, if you're the guy that you're busy interviewing is stumbling over its words, let him finish. Then you say, listen, just uh, uh, pick up on that uh, part where it was... Uh, uh, what, uh, because, uh, because you have two angles, you can quickly cut that piece out, jump to the other angle, uh, because it's stupid when you have this video looking like this uh, on my face and then it jumps to the yeah. next shot. So okay. that's why we do multicam yeah. so that when the guy was stumbling over his words, we can quickly jump to another angle uh, just to give you a different perspective so we can fix that error. And there are many, 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 many little, many, tu many, little many, tutorials many. on that <coughs> very aspect on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But we must promise that we're going to do a proper one like we're doing here yeah. for that so that at, at some stage you want to reference what we just did here or even this it'll be online and you can actually go back and see what we what we did and how we did it because mm. because for us it's second nature but it's you, it can become second nature for you as well it, it just if you do it um, as often as possible and, and not all the people can speak like uh, hi how, how are you doing like you get somebody from the office that needs to do an interview they stumble over their words time after time. I did, um, I'll quickly show you a video clip just now. I yeah, just give it, it to me. Here, so. so what it did was the <coughs> audio, the wave you see at the bottom of the clip um, and the wave uh, at the bottom of uh, the audio, it kind of matches in terms of where it goes up and where it goes down. So, so that's what the, 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 the software actually did. It listened to the camera's clip and it listened to the audio file and then it brought them, it matched them basically 100%. So this is what it would sound like in camera. Hi guys, I'm Nelson Gona from Lightline Studio. We had an amazing week here. We are presenting a few workshops for... And if I pull that down... 
line and inside the studio. Sounds uh, so cleaner. What we did this week is we uh, had a few speakers that came out and uh, just delivered a few. And that's, and that's the idea. You want to get clean audio. You're, if, if we had to, for instance, send this to you, um, to your, to your via WhatsApp or whatever, and you listen yeah, to this on a phone. And there's a lot of noise that you're going you're gonna to struggle to hear. You, it's not going to be as effective as if we send this to you and you actually heard a decent sounding audio coming from this video clip. You'd, you'd appreciate the uh, message even more. Yeah. So, so, so that's, that's why we synchronize. We, we record audio externally and we synchronize it afterward. And um, what I did here, um, I also matched the second angle. Hi, guys. So now you hear double audio. So all I'm doing <coughs> is I'm just bringing that down. Hi guys, I'm Niels And that's what my second angle looked like. So this is where we where we kind of express a bit of creative uh, creativity in our in our cuts. So now I will select little certain portions that I want to cut in, and then. So what I'm doing there is just I'm just making some basic cuts and pulling back the audio here and then going back to his face. And I, and I generally keep my, my, my second angle clips like two to three seconds at a time. So uh, the duration of that is about two seconds maybe less than two seconds. Mm -hmm. If I feel I need it more, I can just pull more forward or, or to the back. Mm -hmm. So this is what it would look like. Hi guys, I'm Niels Neobrad from Light Time Studio. This is very awkward because there's a lot of people just watching me on the other side of this lady. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what to say. <coughs> beautiful day. It started raining, but it keeps busy clearing up. So okay. with you from me, Light Time Studio, Niels Neobrad, see you next week. And that's it. That's basically how easy it is, guys. Um, uh, uh, thank you so much, JP. I, I just want to quickly, uh, we're gonna, before we end off, I'm just going to qu quickly play you a clip. Um, so, um, what's happened is you have to go, like say you go to the Platteland and you need to interview people that have never stood in front what's of What's Platteland in, in English? Flatlands. <laughs> you go to the Flatlands and you need to interview, um, interview somebody. I said, up down. Files. You have to interview people that really have no clue about camera. I think it's going to be the fifth. Wait, look, it's our files, you know. Files, yes. Quickly have a look at this. This is a few salesmen from Mama's Bay, an uh, awesome bunch of guys uh, from Paderberg, but it's really, it's very funny. Okay, waiting for it to load. Oh, you did the forget to Yeah, I did the forget Sorry. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. <coughs> okay, calm yeah, down. It tells, it, it tells me to. Oh, okay. um, any questions, guys? Um, I'm just going to quickly run. There is a few questions on the Facebook that I'm quickly going to have to go through um, before we end up because I see it's already a half past. Um, five minutes over. Five minutes over. Thank you so much, guys, for still hanging around. I'm just going to quickly go to the live feed. Uh, JP, if you quickly could just help me with some, uh, some of the answers there. Um, no pressure. I think uh, we've run through most of them. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically, the mic on the camera was just for speaking purposes. Basically, yeah. yeah. So the mic in camera, uh, you ask if the mic on the camera is for syncing purposes. Um, we always have proper audio recordings uh, because you can use your uh, 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 directional mic. It's basically you put it on your camera with a little uh, bit of a boom. It looks like that. So all the audio that comes in from this side, it captures perfectly for on the go, fly on the go. You can't always mic people up. Like if you want to say, hey, how was the concert? You can't say, hey, just wait. Okay, today. You want on the fly to speak to the people. Uh, so that mic, you can still, there's an input. Most of the cameras have an audio mic. input, mic input, where you then can... Um, Use an external mic. So why I use an external mm. mic is because it gets a cleaner ambience. <coughs> because the onboard mic that's literally on the camera um, picks up a lot of the handling noise. So it picks up what I, when, I ha when I take the camera mm. and then it picks up a lot of white noise as well. And also if there's aircon, it's like blowing over the mic. Mm. 
it's picking yeah. that up. Whereas a the that? sensitivity of this, these microphones that we have is very sensitive, so you can uh, put all the ambient, oh, the outside noises you can low down because the distance here is very short. Yeah, uh, so <coughs> what this does is it literally only takes audio from in front of the camera. So it's directional, and most video mics are then well, all my video mics are directional, but you do get some, <laughs> yeah. They call it a dead cat. The, dead mouse. Yeah, it's, mm. Oh, okay, the, the bigger ones is the dead cat. Dead cat, yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is the mouse that's dead. But it's a wind filter. <laughs> it's basically a wind filter. Basically, you can blow over this. It doesn't pick up the yeah. noise. So if, we, if I'm shooting outside and, I need, and I'm shooting at an event and I want to capture ambient audio, um, but it's maybe a slight breeze and on this get capture some laughter <coughs> of, of people, of kids or whatever, I can use this audio because now I can mix the ambient audio into the video with the music and bring the music down, bring that up, then take that down and bring the music back up again. Depending on what I want to do, normally you have an idea of, of or vision of what you want it to look like. That ideas come from watching a lot of videos and then you memorize, ah, I want that look and then you kind of aim for that. So yeah. Another questions? You guys happy? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Can no, it's that? not playing. Okay, not playing. so uh, I've just have it here. I'm just going to quickly uh, grab that HDMI okay. cable. I'm just going to quickly play you a video clip. It's very funny, and I don't make fun of the guys. It's, re it's just um, sometimes you have to have a lot of patience. Um, at the end of the day, um, I'm just going to quickly open this up. Um, Okay, I'm just going to quickly open up. Oh, I pulled it out, sorry. So these are, these are car sales people, but they, um, uh, they haven't been much in front of the camera. Um, so just have a listen to this. That's two lines, guys. Just two lines. So funny. So guys, you always have to be prepared uh, because it can, uh, just in terms of time frame, you think it's a quick 15 minute recording, you end up with a half a day uh, shoot because you need to, you have to wait and get it right. You can't just rush an interview off because if the, the guy is not feeling comfortable, if he, he doesn't get his words, you need to do it over and over and over because at the end of the day they're going to watch the video and say listen this guy that shot the video did a crappy job because the guys are stumbling over their words he doesn't uh, has no flow so especially with these guys um they're not used to videos the first time ever in front of a camera 
you, you get stage fright. You don't know what to say. It's a, uh, it's, it's, even if it's two sentences, it's, it's, it is a lot for people to speak in front of a camera. So uh, when you plan a shoot and there's uh, people that's not used to a camera, just give yourself an extra few hours just to make sure uh, <laughs> you get the shot. So yeah. Uncle, is it mine? Yes. What if you'd have given them a code for each of them to <coughs> I try to get, uh, I don't give them too much information because it's not natural. When you go like this, you can, you can f so easily see somebody when they read something off. I want you to ask, uh, 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 the, the thing was, hi, my name is from Parabach Isuzu. Thank you so much for your inquiry. I'm busy with your quotation. I'll give it to you uh, as soon as possible. Have a nice day. That was it. <laughs> but for somebody that's never been in front of the camera, it's difficult to do. I mean, like there's, uh, there's guys that like really haven't been in front of the camera. So you have to be patient. You have to get it out of them one, twice, three times. And even I, I, some of them, I took sections out of their two lines because this part he said, right? And then the last part, just at the end, he messed it up. So now to go through the whole thing again, you need to remember. And so then you sometimes you just have to take out the golden parts out of 10 takes. Yeah. 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 So, so it's it's basically that's why the the, pre, the preparation <coughs> for this or the the communication before yeah. they shoot is very important, especially in the in the case like that. I just want to quickly show an example of how you literally go and shoot mm -hmm. and be prepared for anything. Um, so, what this was was it's a, an event, a corporate mm -hmm. event, fun golf day, um, mm -hmm. and the people I had to shoot in such a way that they weren't really aware I was shooting them. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of be ready and just and know where, and I had a lot. But what I did here was um, <coughs> use some speeding up of the video, slowing down here and there, and kind of just played it with the music. You want to okay. say something? Yeah, so we're going to end off our, this, yeah. our week with that video. Uh, we're just going to greet everybody. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So, so guys, um, I just want to say thank you so much for coming through.